So to summarize, there are many JBI resources available to you, the subscriber. The systematic reviews, there are a suite of software tools that enable one to do the systematic reviews, but then the systematic reviews that have been completed are there in their online library. The best practice information sheets, I did a little call out to that earlier. Those are those four page, uh, easy to read, tie-in products that really are linked to a systematic review. They are based upon a systematic review. So they're, they're just terrific. They're sort of pre-appraised, highest level of literature evidence for you to go to as a clinician. There are evidence summaries, and I haven't really dealt, I haven't uh, dwelled on that really, but this is often used by the nodes. Um, nodes are groups of people that have like interests. So I'm, a co I'm actually a co-chair of the Surgical Services Node, uh, and Drew Riddle out of Texas Christian University is the other co-chair. And we look at the evidence summaries within the Surgical Services Node to see which of those really that, that we need to sort of do systematic reviews because there have been there's a gap, there's a serious gap there. Maybe what we have is the evidence summary that is sort of a stopgap measure until we can have that systematic review done. But evidence summaries are often created by JBI staff and other collaboration members that are experts in their field to help put something in place when members cry out for it. So for instance, one evidence summary was just created on surgical site infections. But clearly, a systematic review needs to be done in that area because that is lacking and we know it's a big issue. So there is an evidence summary for that until we can get that systematic review done. There are recommended practice sheets and also consumer information sheets and they are valuable as well. I just Time doesn't allow me to go into those, but those are also other resources that JBI has uh, for clinicians and patients and families.